Hi YouTube! So I know it's been quite a while since I made my last video and I'm really really sorry about that. There's been so much that's been going on. I believe the last videos that I made was for my weeks 11 and 12. So right now I am actually 16 weeks and one day pregnant. So it's definitely been a while. Uh, this video is actually just going to be about weeks 13, 14, and 15. I have a prenatal appointment tomorrow. There's a couple other things going on this week. So I do plan on making a week 16 video. Of course, I think I say that like every week. But this video, even though I am 16 weeks right now, is only going to be about weeks 13, 14, and 15. So a lot happened. Um, first, my camera... <clears throat> excuse me. My camera that we had um, broke. My daughter accidentally dropped it off of the bed and it was like a three-year-old camera and so I think it just had had its time. I don't know. <laughs> it just didn't drop it very hard and it was just an accident but it broke. Anyway, so we had to get a new one and then I had actually recorded my week 13 video and my video <clears throat> talking about the my first prenatal appointment. But we were still trying to figure out how to use the camera and for some reason like the videos didn't record and the camera's being all funny. It was like freezing so we ended up taking the camera back. <clears throat> Sorry I have like ugh, something in my throat. We ended up taking the camera back and exchanging it for a new one and so the one that we have now is um, it, wor it works fine. So that was that. So I was really frustrated because I recorded the video and whatnot and anyways. so. That happened. Then the week after that, we ended up going on like a small family vacation. There's this little um, like aquarium amusement park type thing, kind of like a Sea World, but not as um, big or. Bye. No, I don't want to bite it. Um, but it was called Sea Paradise, and it was um, about the total traveling time was about maybe um, 30, 45 yeah, minutes away. Mama. I don't need it. Thank you. And it was just a little bit of walking and some train rides, and um, it was just at a little town that was away from us, and it was called uh, Sea Paradise, I think I already said that. But um, it was a lot, a lot of fun. We spent the entire day there, and did the kitten scare you? Yeah. Um, my daughter just had a blast. We saw all the um, sea animals. There was lots of dolphins. There was like a show. Um, she actually got to pet a dolphin for the first time. Um, I've pet a dolphin before, but I think I was like really young, so it was nice to be able to do that again. See, all of it was in Japanese. Um, so like the show that we were watching, it was in Japanese, um, and you couldn't understand what they were saying, but you kind of got the gist of it. Um, and so it wasn't bad, and just being able to watch the dolphins and, um, there's a seal and a walrus and all the things, you know, doing their tricks and whatnot. So it was really fun. We had a lot of fun with that. It was a really exhausting day, um, but just totally worth it. It was super fun. And then, the, just this past week, we actually went to Tokyo, um, which is about, again, it's like about an hour away on train and whatnot. Um, but we went with some friends, so they drove. Um, we went to Tokyo, and we went to the Tokyo Temple that's there. I know I haven't really said it on this vlog yet, but I, um, our family is Mormon. So we're able to go to the um, Tokyo Temple that's there. And it was just such a wonderful experience, and um, it was just a really nice thing to experience as a family together. Um, so those three things kind of all kind of all put together in one made it difficult, I guess, for getting a video up because it just seemed like each week I had so much to talk about. And then, you know, and then school, and I'll get more into school in a little bit, but... <clears throat> nah. Anyway, so there's that. Let me just get started on some of the symptoms that I've been going through. Week 13, <clears throat> my nausea finally, like, left. I was, It was gone. And that was just such a relief to not constantly be feeling disgusting all day long. Uh, Mama put it on your lips. Yep, that's what I did, but I'm not going to do it right now. I'm okay. Thank you. Um, my exhaustion did get um, a little bit better. I still feel exhausted all the time, and I think that that is mostly because I'm having to run around after a toddler, and I'm in school. <clears throat> Oops. Um, and so that's why it's so different from when I was pregnant with my daughter. 
I really like to compare the differences between my daughter, uh, my pregnancy with my daughter, and my pregnancy now. Um, I, I think it's a, a lot of fun to compare the two and see the differences. Um, this, these two pregnancies are very, very different. At the same time, that the two pregnancies are so completely different. There's a lot of similarities between them. Um, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I was eating dairy um, up until 13 weeks. At 13 weeks, something switched. I don't know what it was, <clears throat> but something switched, and all of a sudden, <clears throat> I was dairy was a no-go for me. It created really, really, really painful and uncomfortable gas bubbles in my intestines. Um, I was very gassy because of that. Um, it just was. It was just very uncomfortable. Not something that I was able to like happily consume. I've always kind of had issues with dairy, but um, just kind of ate it anyways. I guess with how your digestive system just kind of relaxes or whatnot while you're pregnant, um, my issues with dairy just kind of skyrocket when I'm pregnant. Well, that was at 13 weeks of my daughter. And I hadn't been eating dairy before I got pregnant, but with the first trimester being so difficult for me, <clears throat> I just, I had reintroduced dairy um, back into my diet again. Um, same thing happened. 13 weeks hit and it was like, no thank you, no more dairy for me. So that was interesting that the similarity between the two pregnancies that exactly at 13 weeks <clears throat> yeah, was when, for whatever reason, my body, my digestive system just says, no dairy, no thank you. So that is really interesting. Um, difference between the two pregnancies was I love fruit. I'm a huge fruit lover. And, um... When I was pregnant with my daughter, I ate a lot of fruit, and it was something that I really enjoyed. Um, I had stopped eating sugar with her, and so my when I had like a sweet tooth, it would be easily, easily cured with just having some fruit. Um, and this time around, for whatever reason, I wouldn't say that I have an aversion to fruit, but I just don't desire it. So generally when I, let's say I pack like a snack of grapes for my daughter to take with us while we're walking around, running errands and whatnot, um, generally when I'm just plopping the grapes in a little um, Tupperware, I will, you know, just grab a couple of them, you know, and eat them while I'm preparing her snack. I have no, like, I'll think about it, I'm like, hmm, I'd like a grape. And then I, like, go and I look at it, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm good, I don't need a grape. So it's really weird. I, I'm not, like, completely turned off to it. Like, I've had fruit, I've had, like, banana and orange and apple grapes, like, I've had some fruit here and there, but it, I just... I'd be fine if I didn't. It's weird. It's so weird because um, I love my fruit. <laughs> and so that's definitely been like a super weird change for me. Um, and that kind of started, I, I think that it had been happening for quite a while, but I really started noticing it at like 13 weeks. I was like, hey, there's something to this that I just don't desire any fruit. So that's been really strange. Um, my supply continues to kind of just get lower. I still definitely am producing milk. I can still um, hand express my milk. It's gotten the consistency of it has gotten thicker. So I definitely think that my body is switching over from the toddler milk over to the colostrum. Um, it still is quite watery. It's not like the colostrum that you can express from your breasts when, you know, your newborn first comes out. Um, but it's a lot thicker. So, um, she is almost two, and so, you know, with her having a major growth spurt coming up, that could be the reason for the consistency change also is her needs there, but um, my supply is definitely going down. So she's still just nursing on demand whenever she wants. Um, she's spaced it out quite a bit. There's the kitty's glasses, yeah, in the water because she fell in. Um, she's spread it out quite a bit. Um, she'll ask for it and like say if we're out in public and doing something and I say, oh, you know, you have to wait just a minute until we can get somewhere that's easier for me to nurse her. Um, she will tend to forget and then, you know, just kind of not ask for it again. Mm -hmm. And so, um, she, like sometimes she'll go all day, she'll ask for it but not like demand it and so she'll go all day and then not really get, um, nursed again until the evening time. So um, that's been weird because I'm used to her nursing like constantly throughout the day. So that's kind of what happened in week 13. Um, week 13 was kind of like a, a big week for symptoms and whatnot. Week 14 um, kind of stayed the same as far as symptoms. It was just kind of 
boring, I guess. <laughs> Nothing really exciting happened. Um, the biggest thing that happened week 14 was um, one of the little kids at my church, I work with the little kids in the nursery um, ages 18 months to, I think it's like three three years old. Anyways, and um, I just work in the nursery and watch the kids while the parents are doing Sunday school and stuff. And my daughter's in there with me. So um, one of the little kids that's in the nursery with us, um, she had come down with Fifth's disease. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically, um, it's like a viral rash that you can get. Um, and it's pretty much harmless to kids and adults. However, to pregnant women, it can be um, really bad for fetus, for the fetus. And it can cause miscarriages, stillbirths, um, heart failure, things like that. So that was kind of um, a little bit scary for us. If it's really common for people to get, and half the time people don't even realize that they've had it, um, they say the statistics are about 50% of pregnant women have had it when they were younger. If you've had it, then you're immune to it, and therefore you can't get it to expose it to baby. But um, my mom said that she had never heard of it, so she had no idea. That doesn't mean that I haven't had it. Um, it just means that, she, as far as she knows, I wasn't like diagnosed with this disease. So we were not sure if I was immune to it or not. So we, um, so I had gone to the doctor about it and asked to have the blood test done to find out if I, if I had it first of all, or if I was immune to it. I guess that they can tell that through the blood test. I don't know. That's what the information that I found said. Um, they basically were really retarded about it and gave me this huge packet of information about it, pretty much everything that I found already online. It was stupid. And they said that they're not going to do the blood test until I show up with symptoms, so that I already had it. So it was just dumb because I felt like if I know I'm already immune to it, then I don't have to stress about it. And obviously, the less stress you have during pregnancy, the better. Um, and it just helps me sleep better at night. But, um, so it was kind of stressful, but thankfully... I'm going to No, you can do it. Open it up. Um, thankfully, um, my daughter didn't show up with any symptoms, and I haven't come up with any symptoms. Daddy. And, um, the contagious period for when the girl had it is past and whatnot. So we're just kind of in, in the clear. Hopefully nothing about that happened. But that was just kind of a scary situation that happened when, um, uh, during my 14th week. Um, other than that... Um, during week 14, I made a major decision to, um, I've decided not to weigh myself while I'm pregnant, and when I go into my prenatal appointments or to the doctors, I'm going to turn around on the scale and not have them discuss my weight with me, unless, of course, like, maybe I start drastically gaining weight and, you know, and whatnot. Um, and that decision was made for more reasons than I feel like discussing on this video. Okay, turn the robot on. But mostly just because I didn't want to stress about my weight, and um, I just, uh, and that was pretty much the reason. Um, so we actually got rid of our scale at home, so I have no idea how much I weigh right now, and won't until the end of my pregnancy. Do it, push the button. Just because by the end of my pregnancy, there's nothing I can do about it but work towards losing the weight afterwards. So it's not something that I would stress about, but I do want to know that number at the very end. Um, but that's one of the major decisions that I made. I feel good about the decision. Um, it's just kind of weird because I, uh, before I got pregnant, I was working on losing weight. And now I have no idea how much I weigh.